Hello! Uh, trying this out for the first time. Um, I am going to do a Modern Horizons box opening. We got Sarah looking great on there. Got this at a local hobby shop for 200 which to be honest with you, um, considering the fact that they were 240 250 not that long ago, I think it was a pretty good deal. Um, recording this on my phone, uh, maybe at the end I'll kind of pick it up and show what my, <laughs> my little stand looks like. I've got my good luck uh, from the Vault Transform Huntmaster of the Fells playmat here. I, um, I would flip it over, but my setup is kind of on there, so let's, we've got these packs. We'll go ahead and start with the left half first. And we'll just go ahead and get into it. Looks like these are the non-Japanese because they don't have the pull tab. So let's see what we got. We start with the commons. So we'll probably take this nice and slow. Look at a couple commons here at the beginning. Move it a little bit there. Defile was a good card there. Weather the storm. A lot of popper staples. All right, on to the Uncommons, Ursus Rage, Shatter Assumptions. I always wanted this card to work against Tron and 8-Rack, could never do it. We have our Cloud Shredder Sliver and a Foil Fact of Fiction, Snow Covered Plains art card, Throws of Madness, Throws of Chaos, it's the Cascade Retrace card, and a Soldier and Ren Emblem, sweet. So that foil fact of fiction is pretty cool, but uh, other than that, nothing crazy. Let's go ahead and go into the next one here. All right, we can go through, and I don't think there's any commons that are really, ha. Huh. It's funny, prophetic prism at two mana, doesn't see play. Arkham's Astrolabe at one mana, format breaking. Let's see. We can have triple crab, uh, we can have Crab Tribal now for Mill, so that's pretty good. Let's see, Glacial Revelation, Goblin Matron, ooh, Nurturing Peatland. Not too shabby. Can't wait to see if they eventually finish the cycle with the uh, ally lands, um, just to see, because we have the five uh, Horizon lands plus Horizon Canopy from, what was it, Future Sight? Yeah, that sounds right. So, how's my focus doing? Come on now. There we go. All right. Edict printed in a modern right after a better version. Liliana's Triumph. Valiant Changeling. Forgotten Cove. Come on. Stay focused. Hey! All right. Silent Clearing. There is another one. Mox Tantalite. Objective worst mocks there. So we just got two uh, of those Horizon Land. You know what? Let's go ahead and let's put the lands here. We'll move our foil, our rare, and we'll save this spot right here for Mythics. Get an Urza, maybe, something like that. All right. I'm not even going to mention how I feel about that card. Archmage's Charm, not too shabby. It's a pretty good one. Dude, three or four dollars, I think, still. People wanted that slot to be Counterspell, but honestly, I think that for a long time people slept on Archmage's Charm in terms of its versatility. The cards that have these choose one abilities are always extremely powerful um, with the exception of maybe some of the new inscriptions in Zendikar Rising but even then I think the green one is a lot better than people are giving it credit for at the moment uh, let's see another fact or fiction always a good card and uh, I saw force and got excited for a second force of virtue not the one you want to see not the worst but still not good all right, keep pressing onward. This is much slower than I normally open packs. 
can blaze through a box in about five minutes, I feel like. But this actually helps slow down, enjoy the ride. Also, just to see, you know, if I can't start doing this a little bit more, depending on the packs that I open, because I've got several boxes of Commander Legends coming. Sword of Truth and Justice is our first mythic. Not too bad. Uh, I think that is the... I don't... Uh, Steel and Sinew is the other one. I don't know if that's better the better of the two, to be honest with you. I think if I actually edit this and put it into a real video, I'll probably do what uh, something like Booster Therapy does and have the running total around here, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Anything good? I don't think the commons are really worth looking through. Uh, uncommons. Endling. Uh, the Ling cycle continues. I wanted that to be good. It actually carried me through a couple drafts. Um, the undying bit, uh, there it is, that <laughs> got me through a couple of drafts. Uh, I had an endling and then the steel and sinew sword, which was, that was a powerful combination. I think if you get a mythic just in general, unless it's the mox tantalite, you're gonna, that's the third factor fiction we've gotten. Ooh, talisman, we're gonna go ahead and put that, um... Just off to the side. Know, know that the good uncommons are going to be over here. Talismans and whatnot. Oh, another force. Force of Despair. This is actually not a bad one. Um, I feel like that was underutilized when something like Hogak was still in the format in Modern just because that dealt with just about everything and you could tap out and not worry about you know having them hold back in case there was a board wipe. Instant speed. Uh, just wreck all the stuff that they had going on after they delved away their graveyard. Another popper staple. Genesis, not too bad. Been playing a lot of Penny Dreadful lately and Genesis with uh, Mimic Vat and Oris sees a lot of play. Basically locks you out of the game and makes it so you don't get to play your deck anymore. Um, well, if you have yeah, I think it's can't cast spells, something like that. I'm not sure. Keep going here. Anything good? All right. Huh? huh? Uh, hey, there we go. That's a nice hit. Yogmoth and a foil generous gift being reprinted in Commander Legends. I think the precons in a full art. So I don't know exactly what this is worth, but we'll put this in the foil pile. Let's go ahead and straighten that up a little bit, but all right. So we got an okay hit and a pretty solid hit on that one. Not quite an Urza, but still. Uh, you know what else I'd love would be a, a Ren and Six. Can't get enough Ren and Sixes. Um, but also in the rare slot, there's still plenty of value. You've got your Force of Negation. You've got your Seasoned Pyro. You've got, you know, the... Um, Prismatic Vista, you have, you know, these these lands are still 5 to 10 bucks a piece, so not... The goose is loose! <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, let's see. Commons, uncommons. Hey, speak of the devil, there's the Prismatic Vista. That's still a great card. Um, the new Expedition version of this, I think, looks fantastic, and I know a lot of people are uh, kind of torn on how those look the old original expeditions versus these new ones i personally like them quite a bit but oh, i should probably show that i'm opening this on camera and not going seeding my packs or something like that but already still doing pretty solid uh let's see yep all right we're on to the uncommons one two ah i saw blue damn uh, Miss Syndicate Naga. Um, I wonder if ninjas will ever actually make themselves into modern because I know that they're actually a good tribe in Legacy, but I don't feel like spending two thousand dollars on seven lands. So I doubt that I'll be playing Legacy anytime soon, at least in paper. And uh, it's not like I can actually play paper 
anywhere at the moment anyway, because as, as of recording right now, we are still in the throes of the coronavirus pandemic. Always fun. Such a good pauper card in mono black. God, I love this card. Wait. I'm going to have to go back and review the footage, but I feel like I know this one, this one, and this one were in that order. I don't remember if Winter's Rest was too, but that seems like we might have found some track printing there. On Thin Ice. Alright. Let me get my pile of commons and uncommons over here kind of straightened out so that way we don't have any sort of towering mishap. You know, the very first box of Modern Horizons that I opened, I did not get a foil rare. I was very upset about that. It was still a good box by, you know, by no means was I upset about it, but I did not get a foil rare, and I, I was very kind of just like, really? Shenanigans. That's a good one. Another Defile. Crypt Rats. Giver of Ruins. That's a good one right there. Up and down on this one. People were like, oh, no, it's not good. It's not humans. It can't uh, protect itself. But I think that the thing, the two things that really separate this from Mom are the fact that it's a 1-2, as well as the fact that it can protect against colorless. All right, we're back. Brief interruption. Kind of girlfriend wanted to see what was going on. Told her I was making a video of me opening magic packs for nobody to watch except myself for posterity. I was also very worried about my camera setup, so that makes sense. Uh, I'm very worried. I'm just waiting for the uh, uh, the goose to get it. No, for the um, camera to just fall and just be like, oh, technical difficulties. All right. We've got another talisman. Those are always good. Pashalak Mons. Goblins, gobos are, gobos are good. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I'm sad that uh, that the Splinter Twin-esque goblin deck was around for maybe five minutes after Conspicuous Snoop was uh, printed, but it was cool while it lasted. Let's see what else we got. Exclude... Reap the past. Nothing good. All right. Let's just keep on keeping on. We got two more packs, and then we go on to the stack on the right side of the box. And we've gotten two mythics. Uh, usually five is the target, I think, for a 36-pack box. Um, we've gotten an okay one and a really solid one. So we will see... Another one. Hey, Fiery Eyelet. Can always use another one of those. Storm, or if you ever decide to build burn decks. Any of the red ones. Uh, that one, Sunbaked Canyon. Those are both really good. But I play, in my Storm deck, I play two of these and two Shivan Reeves because if you need a redraw on that, um, that utility is great. I play Fetchless just because... Uh, if I scry something to the bottom, I want it to stay on the bottom. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of debate in the storm world about that stuff, but I say Fetchless is the way to go. Collected Conjuring, um, another card that sees play in Penny Dreadful, which I have been playing quite a bit, and that one is in a five-color pox deck that I saw originally piloted by Caleb Gannon, and he makes great content if you have never seen it. Highly recommend. Um, let's go ahead, and we're moving on to stack number two. I think I want to make sure, because I am superstitious, that we are going to end with a, a pack of... We're going to end... So we've got these. We're going to make sure that we have a pack with Sarah on it at the bottom because she's the coolest planeswalker out of the bunch. Ren and Six is neat, but Sarah's cooler. And also illustrated by my favorite artist, Magali Villeneuve, who does this, who did this playmat as well. All right. Get the focus back on. 
There we go. All right. People also wanted this spot to be counterspelled too, but you never know. We might still get it. Modern Horizons 2 has been confirmed. It's going to have fetch lands reprinted. Ooh, Generous Gift is a good one. Another Talisman. <laughs> Future Sight. I think I have the original printing of Future Sight somewhere in a binder from a box of cards that I got from my cousin that had been sitting in his, my cousin's husband. Uh, a box that had been sitting in his garage for 10 years. Also, a lightly played Onslaught Bloodstain Mire, so that was pretty cool. Still use that one. Let's see. A lot. I got excited there. I was like, oh, wow. Another uh, Horizon Land. Mirrored and Besieged. And our foil rare is an Astral Drift. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, Mirrored and Besieged is actually a fun one for Commander. Um, I've had this idea of building uh, the. Commander Sahili deck and having that as one of the win cons. Um, I don't know if that's actually viable or if that would be something that would be more of like a, a power level four friend group. I'm just going to go ahead and skip through a lot of these commons now. There we go. Uh, this is a good card. Not necessarily one that I'll sit aside, but ooh, there's a Plague Engineer. That is always an, an excellent one to have set aside you can never have enough utility i think i have about five or six of those guys now but oh speaking of uh pre-con commander decks i went to my local walmart uh last week i think at this point and bought one of those mystery cubes you know the ones that have the two packs and then like the sealed deck in the middle and you can't see what it is they come in the plastic cubes um, mostly because I like the packs that were on the outside and I like those cubes for commander decks, deck boxes that you don't have to spend a lot of money on. Uh, the packs were Dragons of Tarkir and Dominaria. Uh, the Bear Queen herself. But um, normally the thing in the middle is like half a dual deck where they take the foil card out and so basically it's just uh, suppliers trying to get rid of their stock and I know that I go in the risk uh, I own the risk uh, when I buy those, but the, this one felt a little bit heavier than normal, so I was like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll buy it. I've got no reason not to, and I opened it up, and it was the 2014 Precon Doretti, uh, I think it's called Built From Scratch Commander Deck, and it has like a value of almost $100, so I immediately went back in and bought the other one. Lightning Skelemental, the bulb lightning right here. I immediately went back in and bought the other one and had the Nahiri deck, uh, and that one's like 122. So, um, like I have another Worm Coil engine now. I've got Skull Clamps and Soul Rings out the hoo ha. Uh, it was great. So I spent 40 bucks and ended up with like 220 dollars worth of cards. The goose. All right, I'll stop that now. Okay, what we got? It's colorless. Ah, Scrapyard Recombiner. And a Foil Sling Gang, Lieutenant. I don't know if that's worth anything, but it's pretty cool, actually. Part of that uh, Conspicuous Snoop combo that I was actually talking about earlier. Uh, can we... Is there a way to... No. All right. We'll just keep it as is. Well, we're about two-thirds of the way through the box here. I'd like to see at least two more Mythics. Um, preferably three, but honestly, two would still be fine. It's three is what you expect out of a Masters, Masters box. Unless you're talking double Masters, then you expect about seven. Uh, let's see. Another Talisman. Bizarre Trade Mage. Bizarre Baghdad on a Stick. Or just once, you don't even get to use them again. This set was interesting because I think that they tried to water down a lot of cards that aren't legal in modern, but at the same time, in a lot of the designs, they kind of overdid it a bit. So hopefully, in Modern Horizons 2, they kind of hit that sweet spot of making things that create new archetypes without making them busted and, and not having cards like like this one where 
obviously it's Bazaar of Baghdad esque, but it just there's no way that this is playable. All right, Ranger Captain of Eos is our Eos 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 Bos Cos Dios Eos is our third mythic. I think that's mid range. I don't think it's the best, but I don't think it's the worst either. Um, wondering if uh, it is still played in a form of like Mardu Death Shadow because I know that was big for a little while. Um, We'll see. I just know that I've lost to that uh, sack ability before when playing Storm, and I'm just like, ah, crap. Let's see. Continue on. Ah, uh, the Cordial Vampire says, Welcome, come in. I still don't have a shirt on. Put a damn shirt on. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so we have one quarter of the box left. Like to see a force negation, like to see something like an Urza. Some pretty, we've got some decent hits so far. We've gotten three of the uh, Horizon Lands plus the Prismatic Vista. Our foil... Get out of here. I said get out of here. Our foil rare was very disappointing, but I've never actually had good uh, luck with foil rares. So, Winds of Abandon, not shabby, not particularly valuable, but a good card nonetheless. Uh, let's see what we got. I think I'm probably saying that, that let's see what we got. Uh, phrase quite a bit. Crumble pack. Let's see what we see. Just said it again. Didn't even think about it. All right. Throws of chaos. I was right. Rebuild. Morphron. Morophon the Boundless is our fourth mythic. Uh, we still have time to get at least one more so urza is urza or ren and six are definitely still available urza's on the pack i think he's in the pack i'm not holding my breath on that one but that would be cool if he was uh, let's see squirrel nest nope unsettled mariner uh Super useful card, uh, considering it can go into pretty much anything tribal. I've seen it a lot in humans and spirits and things. Just another way to uh, protect your stuff from targeted removal. Uh, fun fact, if you have something like a Kolagon's Command or a Cryptic Command, and this is on there, you actually have to pay two uh, if you choose the... Uh, like, for example, Kolagon's Command, you target this for two damage and the opponent to discard a card. Since it's targeting two different things, you have to pay one and then one. And if you can't pay both, the whole spell fizzles. So, fun times. Let's see. Everdream, a non foil Astral Drift. Wonderful. Again, another Penny Dreadful archetype. Blinking things like uh, Deranged Hermit and Elvish Visionary, Acidic Slime, just to make your day miserable. Always fun. You know, the only Masticore that I've seen that's ever been, that I've ever been like, ah, actually, that seemed pretty good, was the Spark Hunter Masticore from... Um, M21, was it? And, of course, it was printed right before all the Planeswalkers from War of the Spark came out. So, generous gift we'll hold on to. Nether Spirit. I actually tried playing that as a one-of in 8-rack, and it was surprisingly effective. Was that a foil Venomous Changeling? All right. I guess we'll keep that in the foils. All right, four packs left. Can we hit the Urza or the... Renin 6 is the question. I'd also like to see a Force Negation. That would be 
Good, it's been pretty elusive. Let's see. Huh? Huh? Sunbake Canyon. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I guess, you know, if you're going to get rares, having four of the five, um, four of the five Horizon Lands are, are not bad. And then you also have the Prismatic Vista. So it's better than uh, bulk rares for sure. Uh, I think those are anywhere between $5 and $10 a piece, just depending on which ones they are. Probably close to the $5 mark at this point. But uh, there are no Horizon Canopy, but even still, Horizon Canopy is still dropped significantly. Oop, hit, hitting the camera. Hitting the camera. All right. And by camera, I mean my phone. Soul Herder, Aria Flame, one of my favorite cards out of this set. I called that that was going to be a good card before anybody in my particular friend group, and I was super right. I'm like, oh, that 10 life, that's not gonna make, that's gonna make it unplayable, and I go, four spells, and you're already, you've erased that. Oh, my Morphron's trying to hide himself in the lands. Two packs left. What can we get? Oh, I see a blue card, I see a blue card. Wait, okay. One, two, Three, Goblin Engineer and String of Disappearances. That is not what I was hoping for. All right. Well, no box toppers in this one, so Sarah for good luck. Force Negation or another Mythic. That's what we're hoping for. All right. Take it slow. Three Ninjas. One, two, let's take a peek. It's a rare, Kevin. Eladomri's Call. Well, not exactly what you want to end on, but again, not not awful. Um, four Mythics, a little bit lighter than I wanted to see, but we did also get four, um, four of the Horizon Lands. I don't know why I keep forgetting what I call them, as well as a Prismatic Vista, and one of our mythics was Yogmoth, which I think is the third most expensive in the uh, third most expensive in the set. So can't really complain too much about that. Um, got some decent, like a pile of talismans and generous gifts, so can't really complain about those either. Um, all right, and like I said, I think what I'll do is I'll probably go ahead and have a running total based on uh, TCG player mids and see what we got uh, total on there. Like I said, I got this box for 200 just at the local hobby shop um, and see if I made money, lost money, broke even, whatever. But um, this was fun to do. Uh, Maybe when Commander Legends comes out, I'll do this some more. I have two boxes of that, plus a collector booster box, so um, could very well make some more of these. I don't know uh, exactly what I plan on doing with this, uploading it to YouTube, uh, whatnot, but we will figure it out. So this was a lot of fun. If anybody did watch this, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. eh, thumbs up. Oh, I did say I was going to show the camera setup. So uh, what I had done is that was actually propping it up, propping my phone up at an angle so that way you weren't seeing this. And I have a candle propping up a box that was holding my phone up like this so that way it was uh, able to see my desk with my uh, playmat on it there. So uh, <laughs> that was my precarious recording setup. Who knows? Maybe I'll get something better next time. Maybe I'll just kind of wing it. Oh, and I also had this as a counterweight, just kind of sitting on the back of the phone. So awesome, fun times. You get to see my uh, Master Sword, my desk, all that good stuff. So thank you again. Goodbye.